Good morning, saints of God. Good morning. We've asked while you are standing, if you would, turn in your Bibles to join me in reading God's holy and inspired word. Coming from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. That's John, the 14th chapter. Very familiar passage of scripture. Beginning at verse 15 through 17, and then we'll look at verses 26 and 27. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. Go to verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. And all of God's children said, Amen. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we are so very thankful for this, another privilege that you've given us to come before your throne. We pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ that you would have an everlasting changing transformation in our lives, that we would never be the same based on our experience with you. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated. The 14th chapter of John opens with the words, let not your heart be troubled. In our text we saw that a bookend of that chapter is he ends with the saying, let not your heart be troubled. Begins and ends with let not your heart be troubled. Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure. And he continues to tell them and remind them that he's going to leave them. He, he, he continues to let them know that, that he was going to be departing. And, and I can just imagine, I, I can just imagine how they must have felt. I, I, I'm trying to just envision how it must have been to have been walking with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How it must have been to see the miraculous things that Jesus was doing. Seeing the magnificent power in his teaching. And then for him to say, I'm going to leave you. I can understand why and how they might be worried. They may have been thinking, what's going to happen to us? Is everything over? Are we going back to fishing and tax collecting and whatever occupation we had? Are we going back to living the life that we used to have before Jesus came into our life? What is next for us? And once again, as I stated earlier, uh, we're reminded in this gospel that he reinforces let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. My brothers and sisters, this morning, could you just look back over your walk with the Lord and look back over your life? Can you think about some times when you were worried? Is there anybody in here who could say, well, I've, I've escaped worry. I have a worry-free life. I don't have another worry in the world. Oh, no, my brothers and sisters, unfortunately, although we're told not to worry, there's just something about our nature that causes us to worry. Amen. The disciples did not fully understand how this could be. Jesus promised he would send a helper. And we have a tremendous gift. The helper that was promised is here. The helper that was promised is here. He's with us. We have this helper. In fact, the Greek word that's used, parakletos, means helper. One that comes alongside to comfort, exhort, encourage, and advocate. Isn't it good to know that you have some help? Amen. I don't know about you, but I need some help. I need some help. If my wife amen. were here, she would sure be saying amen. amen. I need all the help that I can get. But you know what? If we will be honest with each other, all of us need some help in living the life that Christ has set before yeah. us. Yeah. I don't care how long yeah. you've been in church. I don't care how long and what position you hold. But all of us are going to have some struggles along the way in this thing about being obedient to his word. Amen. 
In fact, the text opens with this statement, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. The two go hand in hand. The two go hand in hand. We, if we love the Lord Jesus Christ, then we should also be obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's taught all throughout the Bible, but my brothers and sisters, do I have some witnesses this morning that would tell you it's a lot easier to say it than to Amen. do it? Amen. Oh, but I've got good Amen. news for you. Yeah. The helper yeah. is here. Mm -hmm. The yeah. helper is here. The text, the, the, the Bible tells us, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and observe his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Amen. They're not burdensome. Yeah. Oh, we just talked about how there was a struggle in trying to live for Christ and do the things for Christ, and here in the scripture it tells us they're not burdensome. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like a contradiction, but it's not a contradiction is. It is burdensome if you try to do it on your own. Amen. It is burdensome yeah. if you try to do it in your own spirit, in yeah. your own might. But good gracious alive, if we trust Jesus, the helper is here. And he said, it won't be a burden on you. Why? Because I'm going to give you a burden bearer. Do you know who I'm talking about? His name is the Holy Spirit. He's a burden bearer. I've had some burdens in my life. I've had some heavy times in my life. Can you think about some times in your life when you were carrying a burden? It's nice to know that you got some help. We first must understand that we, can't, we cannot separate the Spirit's presence from the Spirit's purpose. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? It is, a, it is designed to enable us to work and walk according to God's words and his commandments. Yeah. When we hear the word commandments, we immediately think about the Ten Commandments that comes to mind or some other parts of the law. But my brothers and sisters, you'd be surprised that when Jesus was talking about his commandments in the, through verses 13 through 15, he constantly reinforces a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Then John 15, 12 says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And then in the Old Testament, Ezekiel writes, we learn from that book concerning the presence of the Holy Spirit from Ezekiel 36, 27. It says, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Old and New Testament tell us that we must have the Spirit of God to be able to walk in the Spirit of the Lord to fulfill these commandments. Amen. The Spirit's work is to cause us to walk according to God's will. And we need that help in doing so. Amen. How can this occur? I'm glad you asked me that question. The Holy Spirit is our permanent helper. Yes. The question we must answer is, how would Christ be with them when he was leaving? How could he help when he was departing? Yeah. How is Christ able to be with us, even though he's seated in heaven, sitting on the right hand of the Father, being our advocate, interceding on our behalf, but yet be present with us in our lives today? He was also promising them that he would be with them. Now, that's a head scratcher, isn't it? I'm leaving, I'm going to the right hand, but yet I'll be with you. That's a head scratcher. I can imagine how they were confused. I can imagine how they were questioning and looking with puzzled looks. But we don't have to be confused. We don't have to have a puzzled look because my brothers and sisters, I came by today to tell you that the helper is here and present. And the word here that's used when he says, I will send another. And that Greek word for another in verse 16 refers to another of the same kind. Jesus refers to the spirit as another comforter. In other words, I'm going to send someone who will continue the work that I have begun. What was the work that Jesus had begun? It was saving the world from its sins. And how does the Spirit continue that work? 
He would do so through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit forever in each and every believer. You see, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus walked the earth, he was present in a certain place at a certain time. But good gracious alive, because the Holy Spirit, the helper, is here today, Jesus can be at Freeman Heights. He can also be at First Baptist. He can yep. be all over. Why? Amen. He's in the presence of a believer. Yep. You and I have been given that charge, and we've been given the help to go out and tell a sin sick world that there is a Savior, and his name is Jesus. Come on now. Ah, uh, uh, one of the things when I was reading the text and, and studying this passage, I recognized that most people, and a lot of people think the Holy Spirit just appeared in Acts. But remember, we've already said and talked about that he is what? The third person of what? The Trinity, which means he shares all of the characteristics of God, which means he is what? Eternal. Yes, he has always been in existence. He has no beginning and he has no end. And in the Old Testament, we, we looked at the scriptures earlier where Ezekiel said to that the spirit would be what? with you to what? Keep these commandments. But Bible students, 1 Samuel, that 11th chapter, verse 6 says, the spirit came upon Saul mightily mightily so that he could perform a great work but five chapters later five chapters later in 1 Samuel 6 13 it says this the Lord's spirit came mightily upon David one verse later 1 Samuel 16 14 it says the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Yeah. Fast forward to Psalm 51 11. David sinned with Bathsheba. He cries out and says, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You see my brothers and sisters, I'm using my holy sanctified imagination, yeah. but I can just imagine when David had had his oops yeah. with Bathsheba Y'all act like y'all haven't had any oopses. Y'all sitting up there, no, no. look, look, I've had some oopses in my life. David had an oops in his life, and, 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 and I just have to remember, I just have to think that he had to look back and say, oh, I saw what happened to Saul. Yeah, yeah. And he cries out to God and says, do not remove your spirit from me. I'm glad that we don't have to today. Jesus gives us the assurance that well, I'm not going to take it away, that I'll be with you forever. Every now and then, believe it or not, I have a hoops. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I'm so thankful to God that his spirit is there to help me when I have the hoops in life. Yeah. That we've got a helper that will be with us. And so we need to, my brothers and sisters, understand that. And then along with the fact that, that, that he will be there for us, to be with us forever, he gives us three quick bullets about what he will do for us while he's a part of our life. First, he seals us. He seals us. I am so thankful to God that we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Can you just imagine that, that here in Ephesians 1.13, we're told that the Holy Spirit is God's seal on his people. His claim that we are healed, his. Back in the day, if somebody was going to send a message to authenticate the message, they would take their signet ring, good gracious yeah, alive, yeah. dip it into wax, and they would seal the message. Right. And when the message got to the recipient, they could know that it was authentic. Why? Because of the seal that had been placed on it. Good gracious alive. When we trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life, a seal is placed on our life and Amen. says, I'm now a Amen. child of the King, Come the on. Most High God. Come that on. when I stand before him, they'll know that I'm a child. Why? Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. Amen. That we've been sealed. A down payment on a heavenly inheritance has been given to us. Through Jesus Christ. So not only is the Holy Spirit a seal, but he's also the greatest teacher one could have. 
How many times have you read the Bible, studied the Bible, and get something new and fresh every time you read it? Yeah. What is that? That's the teacher. And his name is the Holy Spirit that helps us reveal these nuggets of gold. I, I can't help it, but, but it's just amazing to me how this book can never be old. It can never be stale. It's fresh and powerful in our lives. It's the only book that I, I know of that when I read, I can read the same thing over and over and get something different. Amen. Good gracious a lot. Thank you, Lord, that in a time of need and trouble in my life, I can go to his word and it's a comfort to me. Amen. Oh, I could share with you if I had the time. I've been through some things in my life and continue to have some things occur in my life. Oh, I've had some things that shook me at my core. And I still have those things in my life. And I'm thankful to God that his spirit comforts me in a time of trouble because I recognize the fact that no matter what I'm going through, he hasn't left me, he hasn't forgotten me, and he will provide comfort. I've had some lowest times in my life, the separation of me and my father when he went to the other side. My mother's dealing with some health issues, but through it all, when I go to the word of God, I'm comforted to know that he's in control of all things. And I realize that it's a blessing. It's a blessing to have that comforter there. And there are some things in life that can shake you so hard, my brothers and sisters, that I can tell you only God can comfort you. Amen. And you need that help. Amen. So not only does he seal us, not only are we taught and uplifted and edified through his word, but he also strengthens us. Yeah. He also empowers us to do the work that's been set before us. And we will never be able to do the work when we think it's about our might, when we think it's about our knowledge. We can only be strengthened through prayer and going to the Lord and asking him you guide my thoughts. You guide my walk. You guide my talk. You be the one to strengthen me. Each and every day, my part of my prayer life is, Lord, you have your way in my life because I need you to take control because when I take control, oh, it's quite a mess. Amen. But I need him to strengthen me, to gird me. You know that passage about me and loving everyone? Can we be honest? Aren't there some people that's easier to love than others? Amen. <laughs> Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit helps us to love those that even sometimes are not loved. Don't look at your spouse. Don't look at your spouse. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he's there for us. And we need to make sure and understand he's such an integral part of our walk with the Lord. Later on in this series, we're going to talk about how we don't want to grieve him. And we need to understand that he's there to be our helper. He's there to comfort us. And then my brothers and sisters, not only does he seal, not only does he teach, not only does he strengthen, but we have the opportunity of experiencing God's power to change our hearts. As we walk in the spirit every day, that results in Christ taking up residence in us a deeper, more conscious way then we experience that conversion. Each one of you can look back over your life and see the day that you accepted Christ and see where you are today. And you'll be able to see the influence of the Holy Spirit in your life. There are some things that I used to do, some things that I used to say that I don't do anymore. And it's not because of me, but it's because the power of the Holy Spirit in my life making a difference. He's a helper. And then, my brothers and sisters, I, I, I want to close just by reminding each one of us that the Holy Spirit must have a personal relationship with each one of us. Yeah. I've, I've shared this with you before, and I'll, I'll share it. I grew up in St. John Baptist Church in Wichita Falls, and the youth would sit in the back. And... Uh, somebody's mother or father got too happy and started praising God or jumped up and started doing a holy dance or something. The kids would say, ooh, look at your mama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be embarrassing. But I knew what mama was jumping up and shouting about. Now. I knew what mama was praising God about. 
I knew why she was doing what she was doing because she had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit was continuing to bring to her remembrance how good he is to each one of us. But it's personal. It's a personal thing. The Bible tells us in Revelation that the Lord stands at the door and knocks. He stands at the door and knocks. It's like somebody shows up at your front doorstep and said, I know you got a burden. I know you're hurting them. I want to come in and help. And all I'm asking you to do is let me in. Amen. If you'll let me in, I'll Amen. come in and relieve the burden. Amen. If you let me in, I'll come in and give you the assurance. If you'll let me in, I'll come in and give you the power. Yeah. Amen. But you know what you got to do? You got to acknowledge, I need help. Amen. You need to acknowledge that your help comes from above. Amen. And ask him to come into your life and take complete control. Not just to be saved, but to live a life that's pleasing to God. And that can only happen with the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, leading us and guiding us each day. I pray this morning that if you're under the sound of my voice and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that you would do that. And if you've already done that and, 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 and you can recognize in your life, I, I need some help. I've got some struggles. There's some things in my life right now that I'm dealing with. I'm here to remind you, the Holy Spirit is here for you. You just have to ask him, come into my life. I need you. Brother Larry and I will be up here up front. And we're going to just stand and pray. And if you're here, I would encourage you and remind you that help is here. Won't you stand?